Strange but true stories, tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. In the deep, thick woods of Tennessee, a man-like hairy creature with red, piercing eyes, an ear-splitting scream, and an awful stench has been reported for more than 140 years. Long thought to be legend passed down from generation to generation, there are some that swear they've come face to face with the creature known as the Tennessee Wild Man. Tennessee Wild Man stories have been around for quite a long time, first seen and reported in the second half of the 19th century in West Tennessee. The March 5, 1871 edition of the Hagerstown Mail newspaper issued a warning about the strange creature after a sighting in McNary County, which borders Mississippi. In 1878, the Knoxville Daily Tribune reported that O.G. Broiler, a circus showman, claimed to have captured the beast and put him on display in a cage where paying customers could see this creature face to face. People who saw the creature described it as part animal and part man, black hair with red eyes. Other reports describe the wild man as having either dark gray hair or dark ginger hair between six and nine feet tall. A disturbing vocalization has been attributed to it and has frightened those who have heard it. There is also an accompanying putrid smell that's reminiscent of the skunk ape. And it has been described as very aggressive with tremendous strength targeting dogs and women who ventured too far into its territory. The Mansfield New Journal in Ohio wrote a January 16, 1934 article about a mystery animal devouring dogs in the eastern part of Tennessee. A 1946 edition of the Carthage, Tennessee newspaper told of a creature that roared like a lion and was preying on livestock in the area. The television show Monsters and Mysteries in America detailed two eyewitness encounters of the Tennessee Wild Man on one of its episodes. In 1997, cousins Rob Phillips and Randy Sparks were on a night hike to Bee Cliffs, near the town of Elizabethton in the eastern part of the state. The Bee Cliffs are part of the Watauga Cliffs, a popular recreation spot for people in the East Tennessee area. They had heard the stories of the Tennessee Wild Man, and in fact were even joking about it when they were walking towards the cliffs but they never thought the legend was true or that they would ever see or hear anything like it. There was a misting rain that night. Other than the sound of raindrops falling on the leaves, they didn't hear any other noises in the woods. The creatures of the forest were silent. That was a little strange, but they were excited about a night out at the cliffs, drink a couple of beers, talk about the girls in town, and enjoy the scenery. That silence was broken when they heard the snapping of a twig, followed by a horrible, inhuman scream, unlike the two had ever heard. They didn't pause to consider what the sound was for very long. They turned and ran, going back in the direction of the car, but they got separated in the dark woods. After about a minute of running, Phillips paused to rest by a tree thinking he had put enough distance between him and the creature that made that horrible sound. But instead, he heard something in the tree canopy just 20 feet above his head. The creature had not only kept up with him, but had done so through the trees. When Phillips looked up, he saw the hairy creature with the glowing red eyes from all the stories he had heard, standing on the branch right above him. Phillips took off again, with the creature in hot pursuit. He made it back to the car with his cousin Randy waiting for him. They jumped in the car, cranked it up, and turned the lights on, only to see the wild man standing right in front of their car. He moved around to the passenger side and looked in on Randy. He said the creature was covered with dark hair and could easily have bust out the windows, but for whatever reason, didn't. The two cousins didn't wait around to find out if he would, though. Rob hit the accelerator and drove as fast as he could back home. And then, the full realization of coming face to face with the Tennessee Wild Man 
was no longer the stuff of legend, but as real as anything he had ever seen. Later, Phillips's account corresponded with the initial tales of the Tennessee wild man. He described it as stout, about nine feet tall with red, beady eyes, a set of claws, a horrible, pervasive stink that Phillips compared to the stench of a dead animal and an ear-piercing scream. In December 1981, brothers Mark Epperson and Dr. Frank Epperson had their own scary encounter with the Tennessee Wild Man. They were in Rockwood, Tennessee, which is about 50 miles west of Knoxville, at a mountain cabin for a holiday family dinner. Like a lot of people, they too had heard the stories of the Tennessee Wild Man. Their mother had warned them numerous times about the danger of wandering too deep into the woods. As they sat down for dinner, they heard one of their dogs begin to bark. But it wasn't a bark they had heard before. It was a bark they described as if the dog wanted to get away and hide, like it was fearful. Fearing themselves that possibly a burglar was lurking outside their cabin, the two brothers grabbed flashlights and Frank grabbed a pistol. They stepped off the porch, looking and listening for anything out of the ordinary. They pushed on into the woods, going in different directions. Mark took several cautious steps as he heard the crunching of leaves just ahead of him. As he shone his flashlight ahead, he caught the tail-tale glowing red eyes that seemed to have their own intensity, and then heard a loud, blood-curdling scream. Mark noticed a horrible, garbage-like smell, and then he saw a dog in the arms of the creature. The dog had the worst look of fear in his eyes and was whimpering for any kind of help Mark could provide. The creature then bolted the opposite direction towards where his brother would be. Despite being scared himself, Mark pursued the creature and found his brother a few moments later. As Mark told his brother Frank what he had seen and heard, the creature appeared in front of them. Again, the smell, the eyes, sharp fangs, and dark hair were prevalent. Frozen in place and trying to figure out what they were indeed looking at and what to do, Frank managed to raise his gun. He thought to himself, shoot or don't shoot, now was the time. The creature then made a lunge at the two men and Frank fired two shots from his gun. The creature stopped, took a few steps back, and then according to Frank, let out a scream that sounded like a siren on an ambulance. Then, the creature stepped back into the woods and moved swiftly away. The two brothers felt extremely fortunate to have escaped unharmed. They fled back to the cabin. Mark grabbed his brother Frank by the shoulders and said, That was the Tennessee Wild Man. Frank then understood that all the stories he had heard about this legendary creature may have been strange, but true. This has been another edition of Strange But True Stories. Do you have a strange story that you would like to share with us? Send us an email to strangebuttruestories2 at gmail.com. Let us know what you thought of this story in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell in the upper right corner to sign up for notifications of when the next SBT video drops to YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'm Steve White. Until next time.